check this shit out. This is pretty cool. In Philadelphia, 800 nurses, 800 nurses uh, are on strike. That's pretty awesome. And uh, why are they on strike? They're on strike because, well, let's, we'll, we'll get to that in a sec. Uh, they're, they're on strike from the St. Mary's Medical Center, uh, which is part of the Trinity Health System. It's the uh, hospital system that they are uh, that are part of there, and um, this is pretty cool. Actually, I'm I'm very excited about uh, about the fact that this is happening. And here's the thing, guys: not to toot my own horn, um, uh, but uh, it, I said that this was going to happen in March. That there would come a time where. Uh, you know, the the healthcare workers would just be so fed up with how shittily our government is dealing with this virus and how shittily our government is dealing, is, is treating them as uh, healthcare employees, um, you know, as essential workers, that they will, uh, they will strike. So, here's what happened with this particular hospital, and I am sure that this is not an isolated incident um, with with the with this particular hospital here. I'm sure that it's not, right? Uh, they laid off clerical, administrative, and janitorial staff because, yeah, that's what you need to do. Uh, integral parts of uh, the way that somebody runs their their business somebody runs the uh, their workplace during a pandemic uh let's get rid of that essential thing let's 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 make sure that there isn't a way for people to check in and get all their information into the hospital system let's make sure that we get rid of a way to clean and sanitize uh you know a place where people go to get better from sickness and ailments um, and injuries during a voracious pandemic Let's just get rid of those people that are going to sanitize all that. And what we will do is we'll put it on the nurses. Yeah, the nurses have to do it, right? And and that's that's the that's the way that this this happened. Uh, the the nurses had to take on the burden of, you know, what. what the administrative staff and all of that had to do. And, and that's on top of, you know, the duties of fucking being a nurse as it is. And that's, a, that's already a tough job. And then on top of that, you throw COVID. And, you know, you make the job even harder... Hospitals are overrun with cases. There's not enough beds in in ICUs. America still hasn't learned its lesson from wave one. Where other countries were like, oh, you need to make a fucking specialized area for them. And again, I'll, I'll say it again. We fucking knew wave two was coming. We fucking knew that wave two was coming. So, for... For the hospital systems, higher ups at these, you know, places like the Trinity Health System, uh, to not make a specific spot for COVID patients, and then ask hospitals to say, "Well, let's get rid of, uh, you know, other procedures." So if you have a, con- a heart condition or you need surgery for your stomach or something like that, uh, well, tough luck. Everything is going to go to COVID. You know, do you want COVID or do you, you know, it's like, wh- why are we asked to make these? No other fucking economic system makes you, ch- makes you make these Sophie's choices. They just don't. Because if we ran an economic system out of social responsibility and not profit, this wouldn't be a problem. Uh, this is, this is a hundred percent a result of what happens when you have a profit-driven system? So 
So on top of on top of taking over administrative tasks and janitorial tasks, you had these nurses that had to cover for other nurses who ended up with COVID, right? Because that is a high risk. Uh, when you're treating COVID, you can get COVID. Uh, so when those when those nurses get COVID, uh, they go home and they stay at home. You know, they get paid paid leave as they should. Unless you're in North Dakota. North Dakota is forcing COVID nurses, COVID positive nurses to treat COVID positive patients because why not? Uh, it's insane. That's how you make things worse. And it's not like St. Mary's can't afford to hire more nurses. Right? Like, it's, it's not like they're strapped for cash or something because they're not they pulled in 58 million dollars over the in the past three years consistently that's what they profited that's what they profited by the way it's net profit 58 million dollars some years my net profit is $58, so that's an astronomical number to me. And it is a number that I think you could hire some more nurses. You could hire some more administrative staff. We're, we're, we're reaching record unemployment rates. I, I remember reading at the beginning of the pandemic that uh, Sweden, when Sweden was giving a shit... Um, they were uh, hiring, you know, people that worked in airlines. They were hiring people that worked in airlines to do um, administrative and clerical work. And, I mean, which was fucking super cool, which is awesome. I'm glad that they were doing that. And and and, re- and really, it it took the burden off of, you know, an overburdened healthcare system by having people that were completely out of work doing some extra work. They were doing administrative work and sanitizing work. They trained them and got them in there. This was when Sweden was giving a shit. Now, are you telling me that America can't do that? That America can't look at some of these furloughed industries uh, and hire hire them to help the healthcare industry. Additional janitorial staff for decent pay. Additional administrative staff for, for decent pay. The healthcare industry is already overburdened. I'm 5,000 cases a day in Pennsylvania they're seeing. 5,000 cases a day. But yeah, let's keep going and trying to celebrate fucking Thanksgiving. Right now, there are four other hospitals that are part of the union in Philadelphia, the Nurses Union in Philadelphia, uh, that have voted to strike based on the way that they've been treated, based on salary cuts, uh, based on staff cuts, uh, more more pressures and burdens put on these 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 nurses, and this decision does not come lightly. You know, there there are always these anti-strike people that are like, oh, they don't give a shit. They're asking for handouts. No, no, they're asking for again basic human rights, uh, which are being violated. With staff cuts, with not hiring additional help, not paying them properly salary cuts, putting them in an extremely dangerous situation, sometimes not giving them the equipment that they need, not sectioning off a particular part of the hospital to deal specifically with COVID-19 patients, knowing the fact that you were going to have a wave two with millions and millions and millions of people that would get the disease. (coughs) <coughs> uh, 
negligence, you know. It's it's not it's not a selfish act. It's actually striking is um, something f- for the betterment of not just the working class, not just for these nurses, but for their patients. Right? I mean, uh, more nurses means that the the current staff has to work less hours. Uh, not getting their salary cut means that they're they're gonna be they can take care of themselves. They're well taken care of. Um, you know, so they don't have to work 12 or 16 hour shifts, um, and make mistakes. Uh, they can make medication errors. They can be sleep deprived and, uh, and, and, and make, you know, um, checkup errors. They can get files mixed up. Uh, a a litany of things can go wrong because there isn't enough nurses in the hospital to do, to, to, to check on everything. There's no rotating staff. That's the preference of a fucking profit-driven capitalist healthcare system. All the money is flowing upward. So, striking to get better pay, to hire more people, to be in a better work environment means that the patients will be will be cared for better it's just I mean it's simple logic and again under the greatest health care system of all time we're just, our hospitals are still overrun our hospitals are overrun because we're a capitalist pro uh, fucking pro-profit economic system you know that we I mean we only give a shit about we only give a shit about the money this this is a situation where that is not important I think the people up at the top you know Trinity healthcare system or whatever or any of these larger healthcare systems that own a hundred some odd hospitals across a bunch of states uh, should eat it. Should this fucking swallow up a big loss for the year? That's what they should have done, and they should have been like, "Yeah, you know what? Anybody that comes into our hospital with with this disease, and we need to fucking get them treated, uh, don't worry about it. You're not going to get a bill from us. We're going to bill the government for it. And if the government's not going to give people health care, then uh, the hospitals themselves will bill the government." But they didn't. What really sucks about the disease, too, is once you get it, not only will you, will you probably have a bunch of medical debt that none of the corporate mainstream stories talk about when they talk to survivors of COVID-19. They never ask them about the medical debt that they're in. Not only do you get the medical debt, but you also get permanent damage to your heart, to your lungs, to your, you know, your your blood flow, blood pressure it causes I mean almost irreparable damage to your body when you get this thing. So it's like a twofer. You get this twofer of fucking, you know, you you get this economic scar and then you get this medical scar. And yet, within this thing, we still can't figure it out. We had all the opportunity in the world to sit there and be like, how do we fucking back up our, our, our nurses and doctors for wave two? All the time. Just like with education, we had all the fucking time in the world to figure out how to put kids to school safely. Now, teachers did. I talked to some teachers that, you know, took the... And some nurses might have taken some precautions, but... Just complete negligence. Ignorance. In the part of the American government and the healthcare industry. 
complete ignorance and negligence. This was a tough decision, and a lot of the nurses that that are going on strike, uh, and and you know you, we we could see upwards of twenty five hundred nurses in Philadelphia go on strike. It's a large fucking number. Uh, they feel taken advantage of. They know that they're essential workers. They know that they're on the front lines of this battle of the pandemic. The government knows it. The hospital systems knows it. Yeah, every I mean, everybody fucking knows it. What, what fucking psycho wouldn't look at a nurse and say, yeah, you're on the front lines of this voracious battle? And they're being taken advantage of. Their, their salaries are being cut. They're not, they're not getting the the equipment that they that they need. They're having to take on additional responsibilities that's not part of their job description. They're running out of beds. They're losing patients. And they know that they're in the front lines to help people cope with this disease and what does the system do it takes advantage of them it's going to say we're going to cut your salary anyway what the fuck are you going to do you're going to let your people die and that's the framework that we'll see right if corporate media ever covers this which i doubt that they will because i think a healthcare strike would lead into um, a much bigger and would really push us towards a general strike Um, so I don't think the media will, like corporate mainstream media will cover a story like this. I found this on Left Voice, if you're wondering. Uh, but they'll, but they'll frame it as, well, these nurses just don't care about their patients. They don't care about this virus. When that's the complete opposite. They do care about it. And what they're basically pushing for and advocating for is one better care and treatment of all essential workers right anybody that's considered essential and all all workers should be considered essential considering that's all i mean that's the foundation of this country is is work 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 all right uh, that's that's all any politician talks about is getting america back to work we got to get these people back to work 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 So, it'll, it'll push for a better and safer work environment. It'll push for better worker rights. It'll push for basic human rights at the workplace. That's what it'll really push for. And that is scary to, to, the, to the elites, right? Because that means that they'll lose the power that they have it means that they will lose the 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 money that they have they'll try to demonize the strikers that's usually what they do it'll be interesting to see if um if they do make this a little like if they if this gets violent in any way uh and violence by the way is never really instigated by strikers. It's always instigated by uh, the elites and those in power. It's usually who instigates the violence. Um, I'd be curious to see if the, if this prolongs, uh, you know, will we see any kind of state state violence towards striking nurses? Uh, I, I would also wager to, to, to bet that there will be a lot more solidarity strikes across the country. Those are some things that usually happen that make the movement a little bit bigger, that, that lead us to a, a bigger general strike. And I think because these nurses are essential workers, that there might be some solidarity strikes coming too. 
but uh, I'm going to keep, you know, I'll keep a close eye. I'll try to keep following up on, on, on this as much as I can. Uh, because like I said, I knew, I knew this was coming. I fucking knew this was coming. I knew eventually nurses couldn't, could take the bullshit that the healthcare industry was throwing at them. I knew that the nurses couldn't take the bullshit that the government was throwing at them. And it's, and things are only getting worse because there, there isn't any sort of economic and public health plan. I mean, we're what, eight, nine months into this thing and people, people couldn't come up with a plan. Don't fall for that propaganda that's going to get thrown at you, though, about these these people not giving a shit. And they're, you know, they don't care about their patients or the virus and all that kind of stuff. Um, that is that is propaganda bullshit. They're doing it so that they can be treated better in the workplace so that they can do they can provide the best level of care for people that have gotten COVID-19 or, or any other disease, really. And this should apply to every job, that you should pay them and treat workers uh, with the dignity that they deserve so that they can do their job to the utmost level and the satisfaction of the, you know, the customers or whoever is involved in that job. It's that notion of the customer is always right. No, sometimes the fucking customer is wrong. Sometimes the customer is insane and they're a Karen and they should be stopped. It that phrase gives pretty much the general public carte blanche to treat workers like shit and for corporations to accept treating workers like shit. It excuses them. Because it's not about the worker. The worker has to give up whatever to be to to help the customer, right? So even if you are somebody that works in an office setting And you go to a coffee shop and your order comes out slightly wrong for whatever reason. You scream at the person. You berate the person behind. Instead of being like, hey, I'm sorry. I know it's been a long day. My order's wrong. Just want looking to get a cup of coffee, anything we can do, blah, blah, blah. That doesn't happen. It's usually a screaming match, right? That's 70% of the time. That's usually uh, what, what would happen. But that's because the working class is meant to pit against working class because in certain respects the working class themselves are the customers and the customer's always right. That means that you look at the service industry people as an office employee, uh, you look you look down to the service employee people. So so we create that own hierarchy within our within our own society when really the office person and the service industry person should come together uh, and be fighting for the same thing. Shouldn't be taking shit out on each other. Hey, what's up everybody? Thank you guys so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed the content in this video, make sure you like, subscribe, and share. My content is highly suppressed because this is not topics of conversation that uh, that the corporate mainstream media really wants to, to, to address here. So make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Uh, sign up for my email list. Uh, and that way you'll get weekly uh, uh, emails with all of the podcasts and all of the videos that I put out there. Um, and make sure you go to my website and follow me there, uh, krishmohanhaha.com. That's going to be your one-stop shop for all things Krish Mohan. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. See you in the next video.